What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate. Welcome back to my channel. We're going to continue our team preview and predictions for the 2021 college football season. Today, we're going to be talking about the Oregon Ducks. This is our first team that we're looking at out of the Pac-12. Please, if you guys enjoy this video, leave a like. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, gets the video out to more people. Uh, if you like what you see here, you can hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell because I'm uploading a lot of videos over the summer. You guys want to be sure you tune in. You can also leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think Oregon is going to do this year. You can also leave some video ideas down there. Um, also some teams that you would like to see me preview and predict. Um, and I'll put those on my list as well. Uh, but without further ado, let's, gonna, let's go ahead and talk about the Oregon Ducks. Um, 2020 was a weird year. We all know that. And probably none weirder for the Pac-12 and Big Ten. But, of course, Oregon, part of uh, the Pac-12, only scheduled to play a six-game regular season. Now, Oregon, in fact, ended up playing seven games, and that's including the Pac-12 championship and the New Year's Six Bowl because they won the Pac-12. Um, it, it, it was a weird year for Oregon. Uh, uh, and what most people will consider a down year, although playing six games, didn't really get to see Oregon's full potential. but. They lost a couple games they probably shouldn't have lost. I know they got upset by, I believe, Cal and Oregon State, um, if not Stanford uh, instead of Cal. Um, but uh, that Oregon State loss kind of started it. Um, and then th th that was it for, for uh, Oregon. Um, just kind of fell off the rails after that. Did end up rebounding the USC um, in the Pac-12 championship. But this team is losing some, some great pieces um, but they're also bringing back a lot of pieces. But as I just mentioned before, we can look at what they're bringing back. We have to look at the talent that's leaving. And a really big loss here is Oregon's going to be trying to figure out a new quarterback because their old quarterback, Tyler Shuck, has transferred out. He has since transferred to Texas Tech um, in hopes to just get some more playing time, uh, I do believe, at Texas Tech with uh, the things coming in. Although he was the starter. Um, not quite sure the reason Tyler Shuck transferred out, but hey, he is gone uh, nonetheless. Oregon's going to have to find another quarterback to replace him. Um, Daywood Davis uh, was a cornerback slash wide receiver, played cornerback, I, uh, I believe, in 2018. Um, and I, I think only had like two tackles um, somewhere around there. Uh, and then transferred out to play wide receiver. Um, excuse me. And then transferred out to play wide receiver in 2019. I think had like upwards of 14. I think it was, he had 10 or 14 catches, had a pretty solid season, and then opted out of 2020, decided, hey, I'm going to transfer out. Hunter Campoyer and Penny Sewell go to the NFL. Um, of course, you guys all know uh, Penny Sewell uh, going to be a challenge uh, to replace him on the offensive line. Other than that, there aren't a lot of holes for Oregon on the offensive line. Uh, Austin uh, Falu, um, I probably said that wrong. I apologize. Um, Austin Fowlu, um is gone, as is Jordan Scott off the defensive line. And Oregon's losing a lot of defensive backs. All the names you see here go to the NFL. Javon Holland, Diamondor Lenore, Brady Breeze, and Thomas Graham, all of them are gone to the NFL. But as the saying goes, it's not about what you lost. It's about what you have. And, man, do they have some nice pieces uh, still there. Anthony Brown and Ty Thompson, to me, are going to be battling for that quarterback position. You saw Anthony Brown late last year if you watched any Oregon game, and Ty Thompson is a really good incoming freshman. He'll battle for that quarterback spot. Uh, running backs, C.J. Verdell, but not listed on this list, Travis Dye. Both are coming back, so Oregon should be well-equipped there. Johnny Johnson, Jalen Red coming back out of the wide receiver core, and they're loaded on defense. Kavon Thibodeau projects to be a top-five draft pick. We all know how amazing he is. Linebacking core are going to be highlighted by Noah Sewell and Isaac Slade, Matawatia, um, and defensive backs. Hey, still a lot of great talent out there, although they lost four guys to the NFL. Verone uh, McKinley and Nick Pickett are still both back there. Both are great defensive backs. Take a first look at the Oregon Ducks schedule. You see their record in 2020. They went four and three, so a down year for Oregon. Uh, four and two in the Pac-12. Ended up being Pac-12 champions, but did lose the Fiesta Bowl to Iowa State. Hey, we're going to go through and talk about each of these games. I'm talk about some games more than others as they're more interesting matchups to me. If the day gets highlighted in green, it's a win. If it gets highlighted in red, it's a loss. You know how this works. Without further ado, 
let's talk about the Oregon Ducks schedule. And we're going to start off, of course, at the top. Fresno State is going to be their first game. We're going to go ahead and highlight that one in green right now. I don't see a way Fresno State wins this game. Just the talent gap is enormous. There's, there's absolutely no way uh, Oregon loses that one. Um, but their next game uh, is the one every college football fan is circling, and me being an Ohio State fan, you know I have this game circled on my schedule. If you've watched my Ohio State preview predictions, you already know um, my prediction on this game. But I'll talk about it for those of you that have it anyway. Uh, the game against Ohio State for Oregon is their biggest game of the season, without a doubt. I know a lot of people were really excited to watch this game last year, and it just didn't happen. And it, I, I was disappointed. Every college football fan was disappointed. Every Oregon fan was disappointed. Ohio State and Oregon were slated to play a great game last year. Um, in Oregon, well, now they're going to have to play this game in the shoe. Um, still slated to be a fantastic matchup as it projects right now. A top 10 maybe, but definitely top 15 matchup. College game day should be here. This environment is going to be trouble for Oregon. It's going to be Ohio State's first home game in over a year where fans are going to be allowed. The place is going to be rocking. It's going to be sold out. I expect some sort of record crowd. Um, I know they got rid of some seats in uh, the horseshoe, but overall should be some sort of record crowd. The stadium is going to be bumping. Um, now, <laughs> uh, that, that spells trouble for Oregon, of course. But you have to look at it from a football perspective, of course. While Ohio State has home field advantage, both these teams are going to be looking to replace quarterbacks. Both these teams have some nice pieces out there, running back, wide receiver, and tight end, respectively. Offensive line should be good as well. And defensively, well, Ohio State struggles more defensively than Oregon, I would imagine. I think Oregon's got more pieces filled, while Ohio State's still got some questions figuring it out. Like, how good's the back seven's going to be? Will our linebackers, or will Ohio State's linebackers be as good? Will Ohio State's defensive backs be as bad as they were last year? Those questions are going to be answered, I believe, in Ohio State's first game, which is against Minnesota. Um, and over the spring, Ohio State's back seven hasn't looked bad. It's actually looked pretty good. Um, and compared that to the home field advantage, the bumping crowd, the bumping environment, Oregon's got a lot of great talent, but I can't see them pulling this one out. I just can't. Looking at it from a foot, I mean, yes, Oregon has some more pieces filled, but Ohio State's got so much more talent. I, I mean, comparatively, respectively, Ohio State's just going to win this football game. Then you have Stony Brook. That should be an easy win. Go ahead and highlight that one in green, uh, as should Arizona. Um, so Stony Brook, an FCS team, they should Oregon should wipe the floor with them. It should hang 70 on Stony Brook. Um, and then Arizona, one of the worst teams in the Pac-12. I mean, Arizona has gotten slightly better over the past couple of years, but it's not uh, enough improvement to be able to beat the Oregon Ducks. So through the first uh, third of the season, I say Oregon goes three and one, that one loss being to Ohio State. By the way, I do think the Ohio State game is going to be very close. I think it's going to be a good game. I just think that Ohio State has um, the better pieces, especially offensively, to be able to get that one done. Uh, so now moving back ahead, Oregon's got a lot of tricky road games in the Pac-12. I mean, you can just scan it now and you can see that's a hard game, that's a hard game, that's a hard – wow, they got – yeah, they got a lot of hard games. This one at Stanford could be a tricky one. Um, Stanford's not a team that's going to make your eyes pop out of your head and say, wow, they're amazing. But Stanford's still going to be a solid team. I know Davis Mills has gone uh, to the NFL – but there are still some nice pieces at Stanford. And I think Stanford can be a team that might catch some people by surprise this year. Now, I didn't have them on any underrated or overrated list, anything like that. Um, but I think given the right opportunities, this team can surprise some people. I think this game might be a little closer than expected. Stanford might hang around, but in the end, I do feel like Oregon's going to be able to pull this one out. Just the more talented team, uh, they should be able to get that one done. Then they get their bye week, and obviously looking to schedule, there are better places for a bye week. Uh, but it comes before a Friday game. Um, Friday games are usually tricky for highly ranked teams if they're on the road. This one's going to be at home for Oregon. It's going to be against the California Golden Bears. California is a team that is usually really feisty. They're going to give you uh, their best punch. They're a feisty team. 
um, and, and they like to play good, hard-nosed uh, football over there at Cal. And it's a team that's given Oregon some troubles. Like I said, they've upset Oregon lots of times in the past. They've played Oregon tough. Um, I believe even beat them last year. You can correct me on that if I'm wrong. Um, but th th this is the team that's going to be uh, competitive uh, with this Oregon Ducks team. Again, they might hang around for a quarter or two, but in the end, I see Oregon being able to pull away from this one. Probably a 20-plus point win for Oregon. I don't see the Golden Bears giving them any sort of trouble this year. And now comes their first really tricky road game besides the Ohio State game, of course. Their first really tricky road game in the Pac-12 against the UCLA Bruins. Now, UCLA, in my mind and a lot of other people's mind, projects to be a team that is going to surprise some people. Chip Kelly has been there, and they've never really looked that good. But last year, they made excellent signs of improvement. Now, the record won't say they made great signs of improvement. They were three and four. What are you talking about? They made some excellent uh, improvement last year. And UCLA is bringing in some excellent transfers. Of course, Dorian Thompson Robinson is going to be back at quarterback. Uh, but they have a guy by the name of Ethan Garbers transferring over from Washington. Game we're going to talk about here in a little bit. And they also have one of the most under, underrated groups of running backs in the nation, highlighted by uh, Demetric Felton and now newly, uh, uh, newly named UCLA Bruin, Zach Charbonnet, transferring over from Michigan. It's an excellent running back room. The only problem I have with UCLA is their defense. Can their defense step it up? Um, we know what their offense can do. We've seen it. Can their defense take that extra step this year? Um, I think this is a game that's tight most of the way through. It's on the road. It's probably going to be a hard environment for Oregon to play in. But I just see Oregon being able to barely sneak this one out. The upset potential is there, yes. But I see Oregon eking out a win against the UCLA Bruins. Then they come back home and play the Colorado Buffaloes. I'm not expecting too much out of Colorado this year. I know Colorado's usually been a team that's like up and down, up and down. Um, last year wasn't. Well, last year was actually pretty good for Colorado. Um, definitely surprised me. I don't know if that can continue for Colorado this year. And even if it did, I don't see them even coming close in this one. Maybe they keep it within uh, a respectable range, but I still think Oregon's able to take control uh, and win the game. Their trickiest road game since the Ohio State game, in my opinion, the game against Washington. Uh, this game did not get played last year because of COVID concerns with Washington. And then Washington had more COVID concerns come the Pac-12 title week. And then they let Oregon in. So I think a lot of Washington fans um, are looking to get some revenge. Washington uh, looking to beat Oregon, hopefully get to a Pac-12 championship. Washington's going to be a good team. Uh, we've talked about it already, but they're also going to be replacing a quarterback. Hey, we saw what they can do last year but now they're going to be under a new quarterback system. Um, they are bringing in the number one rated pocket passer in the nation. Uh, and they also dug into the transfer portal as both their starter and their backup left them um, to the transfer portal. So they dug into the transfer portal uh, from Colorado State. Patrick O'Brien should be that starter unless, of course, the number one recruit has anything to say about it. Uh, this is going to be a close, hard-fought game. And I I got to tell you, Oregon's going to lose one of these four road games in the Pac-12. It's just going to happen. In my opinion, it's going to be this one. I mean, they could lose multiple. I just see them losing this game here to the Washington Huskies. I think it's a hard-nosed spot game. Maybe it comes down to a game-winning field goal, but I do think the Huskies win that one. And I think Oregon easily is able to beat Washington State. Not a very good football club. Still rebuilding after uh, Mike Leach left. Should be able to win that one. Now, guys, I'm not going to lie to you on, on this next one. I really wanted to pick Utah here, but I just can't. I, I feel like Oregon's going to squeak this one out. Now, Utah, they're bringing in uh, Charlie Brewer at quarterback. We know what Charlie Brewer can do. If he has any season like he did in 2019, Utah's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Also have one of the better tight ends in college football by the name of Brant Keithy. Also have some really good defensive players. This is going to be a hard game for Oregon to win but I do think they're going to be able to squeak it out. Um, comparatively, I think, again, these late, these late game, um, there are these late season games are always hard to predict. I think Oregon's got a lot figured out by this point. I think they're going to be able to get that one done. And I also think they're going to get revenge against their rival. The Oregon State Beavers, I do believe, are going to go down in 
what used to be called the Civil War, but of course is not called uh, the Civil War now, I do believe. So as you can see, two games are highlighted in red, and that means I have Oregon going 10-2 and two in 2021. To me, Oregon is a good enough team to go 11-1. and one. That's why I have their best case scenario. I just can't see them beating Ohio State. Even, even, and even if they do, I can't see them getting through this Pac-12 schedule unscathed. There's just so many tricky road games for them. Again, on the road at Stanford, UCLA, Washington, and Utah. Those are some hard road games, and they're going to trip up at least one of those places, in my opinion. Now, again, worst case scenario, they could lose all five of those road games and go seven and five. Absolute worst case, absolute worst case scenario, though, probably not going to happen, but I like to put it on there just because it's fun. And uh, with that being said, hey, that's going to do it for my Oregon preview and predictions. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree. This is a pretty difficult schedule, um, but if any team is equipped to handle it, it might be the Oregon Ducks. I have them going 10 and 2. Um, you guys can let me know what you think down in the comment section below. On top of that, please be sure to like the video. It uh, really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm, gets the video out to more people. You can also subscribe if you enjoyed this video or any of my other videos. Feel free to do that. Ring the bell. You want to know when I upload. I've already told you, you can leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Next team, we're going to be looking at Texas A&M. The Aggies are next on the chopping block. Remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. I'll see all of you guys tomorrow when we talk about Texas A&M. Goodbye.